Hey guys, it's Jay and today I'm here with my February wrap up for 2019 part 2. I actually have to split my wrap up into four parts because I ended up reading a total of 28 books this month. So these are books 7 to 14. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about in this wrap up is Arch Enemies by Marissa Myers and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Obviously I absolutely loved Renegades. This is the sequel and I am obsessed with it. It is such a fun series. I loved getting to see all the characters I fell in love with in the first book again and watch them grow even more. Nova is still a badass. I love her character so much. I really liked being able to see her struggle with where her loyalties lie, whether it's with the anarchists or the renegades and trying to decide how she feels about all of that. I also still really love Nova and Adrian together. I loved watching them grow together and apart as individuals. I loved the relationship between both of them in this even more than I did in Renegades. You really see it grow and develop throughout the story. I also really loved being able to see all the side characters grow and develop more in this book. I loved Oliver. Again, he's just such a great comedic relief. Honestly, I just loved the banter between all the characters. It was just so witty and funny. And also Max is just like my sweet little cinnamon roll and I love that he played such a big role in this book. The book is honestly just so fast-paced and action-packed. I could not put it down. I'm usually scared of big chunky books like this but I flew through this one. I loved learning more about the behind the scenes of the Renegades and I love the inclusion of the weapons and artifacts part of the headquarters and I also love the introduction of Agent N and what that means for the Renegades and the Anarchists and I'm just very very excited to see where the third book Supernova takes us. The next book that I read for this part of the wrap-up was A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahara Mafi and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This takes place one year after 9-11 and it follows a American Muslim teen named Shirin. Shirin is not surprised about the cruel treatment that she receives at school. As a Muslim teenager, Shirin made the decision to wear a hijab as part of her daily life and she receives a lot of racist treatment because of this. In order to try to make it through her day-to-day -day life, she spends a lot of time listening to music and break dancing with her brother and their friends. And then she meets a boy named Ocean James who for the first time seems to notice her for things other than her religion. I think that this book is very heartbreaking. You can really feel Sharon's anger radiating off the pages. So as a privileged white woman, obviously I am never going to have the same experiences that Sharin had to face and then coming to realize that that Tahara Mafi actually wrote this kind of like an autobiography kind of thing based off of her own experience was even more heartbreaking. I really liked how this showed Sharin's struggles through daily life but it also showcased her as just a regular teenager with the same hopes and dreams that everybody else has. I really loved learning more about her religion and her culture and the ideologies that they have because I didn't know pretty much anything about this religion so it was interesting to see what it was all about and I also really enjoyed the brother-sister relationship. I really liked Navid and how supportive he was to everything that Shireen did no matter what. He was there for her and backed her up even if it wasn't the best decision. Although I did like the relationship that developed between Ocean and Shireen, I think that the biggest complaint I have for this book is Ocean. He just seemed to be a huge cliche in my opinion. Shireen had to face so much abuse and just unfair treatment and Ocean's big problem was that he was a basketball star but he didn't like basketball and it's just like if that's your biggest problem sir like you need to reevaluate how you view the world. I understand why Tahara Mafi chose his problem to be super trivial to like show the comparison but it just made me angry because I was like you ain't dealing with shit like you don't want to be on the basketball team quit it's not that hard. I did like how Ocean came to realize how naive he was being in the end so that was a great aspect but overall Ocean really pissed me off. The book is definitely eye-opening and I highly recommend it for pretty much anybody to read. 
The next two books that I read for this part of the wrap-up um, are quite controversial when they first came out, but I really liked them, so hate on me if you want. I'm really sorry, but they are very good books. It's The Black Witch and The Iron Flower by Laurie Forrest, and I gave them both 4.5 out of 5 stars. I'm thinking about doing a full review for the series so if you guys want that then let me know but as i said i know that this was super controversial when they first came out and i think that everybody's opinion on the book is valid but personally i didn't find a problem with them but that's a whole other video. This series basically follows Elowen Gardner, who is the descendant of the Black Witch. Before dying, the Black Witch was the most powerful witch in Gardneria, and she ended up defeating the evil ones during the Realm War. Elowen is the spitting image of her grandmother, but she doesn't possess any of the power that her grandmother had. Elorin is given the opportunity to go study at a university with her two brothers. Her Aunt Vivian decides that she needs to be wand-fasted to a very influential mage in the society named Lucas Grey, and she will stop at nothing in order to make her life miserable until she agrees. And then there's also Fallon Bane, who is a level 5 mage who is the love rival for Lucas Grey, and she will also stop at nothing to make Elorin's life miserable if she tries to wand-fast to Lucas. While attending the university, Ellerin quickly realizes that there are many different variety of people and species who are attending there. As Ellerin spends more time at the university and with all these other species, she quickly realizes that her beliefs may not be the most appropriate and she starts to change her views. So like I said, very controversial for a lot of people. I really liked it. I definitely recommend both of these if you guys like like high fantasy kind of books, but if you guys want my full thoughts, let me know and I'll do the full review. If not, that's cool too. The next book I have, I really did not like. I ended up giving it a 1.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, but it is Stealing Snow by Danielle Page, and I am so bummed that I didn't like this. So this follows Snow, who has been living in an insane asylum for as long as she can remember. The one thing that makes it tolerable is her best friend Bane being in there with her until one night they share a kiss and everything changes. Snow finds herself in a far-off land that has a prophecy that says that she will save everybody there from the evil Snow Queen who has frozen the land. Honestly, it was just really boring. It made no sense whatsoever. There were so many jump cuts to random things that made no sense. A lot of the book was just Snow complaining about how she loved Bale, but then she ended up in a love square with three other boys and I was just like, um, if you're so in love with Bale, why are you kissing two other people when you literally just met them like two hours ago? It was just a lot, you know, and it just not, not a good book, just not a good book. The next book I have is another one I didn't really like that much. I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, but it's called Bedfellow by Jeremy C. Sharp, and it sounded really cool when I read the back, but then the execution was just not very good. It follows the Lund family who were enjoying a family game night one night when a man seems to crawl through their family room window. It turns out not to be a man, it's some kind of creature who ends up infiltrating their lives and changing their memories and it just didn't really make a lot of sense. So the story is told from alternating perspectives between the two Lund children, Kimberly and Thomas, as well as their mother, Amani, and their father, Hendrik. I enjoyed the two kids' perspectives, but the mother's perspective was just kind of annoying because all she did was complain about how her husband didn't love her and then the husband was just a big fat jackass and he just made me really angry the entire time. The book was just really slow as well. It didn't really feel like anything was happening. Like I understood 
the concept of it was supposed to be really creepy because this person came into their lives and he was apparently a stranger but then all of a sudden they think he's their uncle and they grew up with him and it's like he changes their minds but like the execution was just poorly done like it could have been so cool and it just wasn't so I don't know I wouldn't recommend it but if you're in for like being really confused for the entire book then check it out and then the final book that i'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is called white bodies by jane robbins and i gave this a three out of five stars it follows callie who has always admired her twin sister tilda then tilda meets a man named felix and quickly marries him as time goes on callie begins to think that tilda is being abused both physically and mentally by felix so she decides she's going to join an online forum for abused women to try to figure out how to help Tilda. And then Felix ends up dead one night in a hotel room, the possible murder victim. This story initially had me very intrigued with both the characters and the storyline. I was hooked right from the beginning, but as the story progressed, it just went downhill for me and I started to hate it, to be honest. Although it's very predictable, it flies by very quickly because you want to keep reading to figure out what's actually going on with the two sisters. Their relationship is definitely an interesting one. It's very disturbing but it was really interesting to read through it and try to figure out who was the reliable sister, who was the unreliable sister, who to trust, who not to trust. It was just really intriguing but I kind of hated both of them. I think my favorite part of the story was the flashbacks to when Callie and Tilda were younger because it really showed why Callie idolized her sister so much and became so obsessed with her. So that was the best part to me. The present day was just kind of weird because it was, Callie was just weird. Let's just say that. And Tilda is so manipulative. And it was just a really interesting story, but I think it could have been done a lot better because I guess the ending from like the very middle of the book I was like this is what's gonna happen and that's what happened and I was like <clears throat> you know all right guys so that was my part two wrap up of February part three and four will be out sometime when I film it let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them also let me know if you guys want a black witch iron flower wrap up full thoughts I don't know if that's a thing you guys would want to see, but let me know, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!